Uh, I'm Andy Hayon. Uh, I'm a program manager in the SharePoint Experiences team. Uh, my team works on the mobile applications, the applications for SharePoint, and uh, pages and publishing and news. I'm joined by Dave. Hi. Uh, I'm a program manager on Andy's team, uh, working on pages, publishing, news, uh, and portals. Dave's got more jokes for us as we go, so if you missed the first few, uh, I think we got some more to, to share with you. So let me uh, frame up how we think about the mobile and intelligent internet and SharePoint that we're working to deliver. Um, you may have seen this slide before. This really kind of sets the context for how we think about uh, a number of the investments we're making to, to um, bring SharePoint forward and deliver that mobile and intelligent internet overall. Uh, in the middle, you see three experience areas that are core to how we view the mobile and intelligent internet. You see team sites and team collaboration, having teams be able to get work done, form quickly and easily, be productive working together. Uh, in the middle, you see content publishing and portals, the ability to create rich experiences that can be distributed and broadcast out to uh, employees in an organization. And then on the right, you see business apps. Uh, how do uh, business applications integrate with that internet overall? How is it uh, easy to create and deploy business applications that employees can get value on, be productive with? Underlying all of those for us are key enablers that we think of. Uh, Office 365 groups for membership. Uh, that's an easy way to form uh, entities of people, uh, groups of people that can then take advantage of the assets that are avail to the, available to them for team collaboration, for publishing, and for business applications. Uh, we work a lot on providing intelligence and personalized experiences powered by the Microsoft Graph. Uh, that's a big investment area for us. As we think about the kind of world we live in, you've heard some of the facts about information and data creation uh, that's happening right now. We think it's really important to deliver relevant, personalized information in all the applications experiences we provide. So we make investments in the Microsoft Graph to help us achieve that, and that's across the different experiences we provide. Uh, the SharePoint framework, you've heard a lot about that at this conference. Uh, we brought a new SharePoint framework. We're gonna talk in this session about how client-side web parts really feed into that and are a key enabler for us in the Pages experience. Uh, but that's uh, something that really is a powerful way to create those business applications and extend the functionality that's provided out of the box. And then, of course, you expect the security and compliance across Office 365, and that's, that's critical. We've had a number of sessions uh, at this conference, and we'll continue to make uh, significant investments uh, to meet our customers' expectations around that. At the top, you see native mobile experiences. This past year has been a big year for us to invest in the SharePoint apps. We've delivered a web application that we refer to as SharePoint Home. We've delivered an application on iOS. And at this conference, we announced the preview releases for SharePoint on Android and Windows. Uh, so that's a big, uh, important investment for us that we want to bring all of those experiences together and make sure that your employees can access the information on that modern intranet wherever they go on whatever device they're using. And then hybrid solutions uh, are also critical for us and kind of wrap these things because they're, it's important as we move uh, from on-premises to, to the cloud that these experiences help in that journey and, and help contribute to that transition. So that's a bit of, of framing. We're really going to focus in the middle today uh, on content publishing and portals. So to do that, uh, just quickly, uh, we want you to walk out of here with a great understanding of uh, both what we're, we have uh, with the existing experiences around page authoring and news, uh, where we're headed in terms of publishing and out-of-box experiences for that. We're going to dive into and demo modern site pages. Uh, we're going to talk about what's next for modern site pages. We're going to dive into and demo SharePoint News, and then we're going to talk about the future for modern publishing sites. Uh, we hope we'll have time at the end for questions. If not, we'll be here. We can also take it outside because I know there's a session coming in immediately after. So uh, we'll stay around. Uh, we've got some other teammates with us. We'd be happy to try to answer any of your questions. And if we need to, we can take it outside. Uh, time, time runs over. So modern site pages, the, the first thing I want to talk about in terms of modern site pages is we want to make it easy to create beautiful looking pages for end users. Uh, we want them to be able to communicate their ideas, their information, to share content. Uh, and we want to provide a rich authoring canvas that has powerful capabilities but is very approachable, very easy to use. 
Um, we want to provide a gallery of web parts to extend that capability for how those pages can communicate that information and how they can deliver content in the, in the context of that page. Uh, within Microsoft, we're investing in a number of first party web part experiences. Uh, and uh, we also are extending that out to uh, make third parties available to develop uh, on our web part framework. We think these are the modern building blocks. Uh, the authoring canvas that we're going to walk you through today and web parts are built using client-side HTML and JavaScript. At this conference in general, you've heard us make a move to more client-side applications, uh, and this follows. This is a modern way to create applications and content and pages, and these are all uh, built in that manner. The pages are reusable also in custom applications. So uh, the, the pages, the web part, the canvas are part of that SharePoint framework that we want you to be able to use to create those uh, experiences in the applications you develop. Mobile support is built from the start. So as I talked about earlier, mobile applications have been a big uh, push for us over the last year uh, in our team. But basically, everything we do now will be responsive as well. So we think about uh, not just an application experience on the phone platforms and the tablet platforms and device platforms, but we want to make sure that no matter what device our customers are using, that they have a responsive experience that would work in, in web experiences or in native applications. So content reflows across different device sizes. Pages are fast and fluid. Performance is a critical area for us as well. And the content also can be context aware of the device it's on, and the parts can be context aware to the device that they're on. And then as I talked about a few moments in kind of setting the stage, the graph is uh, critical for us to deliver that personalized, highly relevant experience. So pages get better with the Microsoft graph. Relevant pages are delivered to the people that need to read them. They're delivered in a variety of applications uh, across mobile and web. And that helps really filter down to the essential information. I can always go to the site, the team site, to get that content. Uh, I can browse to any site that, uh, that I want to get access to to see that content. But we also want to make that delivery uh, at your fingertips when you're logging into these applications. I talked a bit about web parts. Uh, web parts uh, in SharePoint have been around for a long time. They've powered uh, application development for a long time. Um, the modern web parts, really, one of the big things is to shift to a, a client-side uh, experience so that uh, these parts can be configurable, they can be reusable, uh, they're purpose-built components for specific scenarios, and we're going to walk you through many examples of that. Uh, they add functionality to SharePoint page experiences. Uh, they are the critical enabler for bringing data and bringing content into that page experience. The authoring canvas is a great way to kind of create formatted content, express my ideas in the form of, of content. In addition to that, it provides the canvas to put down the parts that add all of the rich functionality. And we're going to demonstrate how that works. As I said a bit earlier, they're context aware for devices and for the content. Uh, they can resize, and as we said, we, we work on making these responsive right out of the box. And then they provide a new way to have real-time interaction with data on the page. Uh, so you don't have to, as you're authoring uh, or as you're consuming, you don't have to republish or refresh the page. You can interact with the data directly on the page. We think of this as, uh, from an authoring standpoint, uh, edit mode always provides the truth. So when I'm providing, uh, I'm creating my page, I'm putting web parts on the page, I get the view of what that page will look like, and I get real-time interactivity as I'm doing it. Similarly, for the consumption side, as I'm uh, looking at these pages, if there's a Power BI web part, for example, uh, you've probably seen the case where I can pinch and zoom onto that, and, and I can also uh, interact with the documents on the page, I can interact with videos on the page, and I, I don't have to do anything in terms of interacting with the browser. It's all native into that experience. So with that set up, uh, Dave's going to take us through building a page uh, with a whole bunch of parts and a rich experience for demonstrating our modern pages. All right. Um, so I'm going to start out on the SharePoint home. Uh, if anyone attended Andy and Nate's session uh, yesterday, you saw uh, this is the new home for SharePoint. And it's how I get started. It's how I find my sites. Um, yes, we're working in the loyalty program group. Uh, I know no one has seen that yet. Um, so one of the first things we did with pages um, is we, we brought them to the fore. Uh, in the command bar in the new team site homepage, uh, you have a new button. Uh, so your users see that they can create content right from the get-go. Um, 
and pages are uh, equivalent to lists, document libraries, or apps, uh, and, and they're easily created. So much more discoverable than they were before. And I, I just want to point out, I, the transition to that new author in Canvas, it was instant, right? We have been so laser focused on making SharePoint a fast, fluid experience. Um, I, you know, a year ago, uh, I don't know that I could have uh, you know, focused in on that. Um, so what I'm doing in this example is, uh, unlike the news demos that you may have seen, I'm going to create a page from my site that kind of extends the structure of my site. I want to create a resource uh, for my team, right? So I'm going to call this uh, Q4 resources. And the first thing I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to add a bit of text. Uh, you know, the, the scenario that we're going through is, uh, you know, I have a team of people that go out and talk to retail partners, and they kind of track our progress um, with those partners over the quarter as we're, you know, working toward our goals. Um, and so I want to remind them of uh, our mission statement. So it's easy to copy and paste text in from wherever you're taking it from. I have a bunch of options for creating headings. Um, nah, it's a little too big. Go. Add another part uh, because I want to remind my team what our mission statement is. You know, as they're going out, as they're working, there's this broader mission that we're trying to achieve as we as we work toward our goals. Um, and so I just have the uh, the loyalty program's mission statement uh, that I want to put on the page, and I really want to make it pop. Uh, so this is just an example of what we can do uh, with the rich text editor. Um, we're going to keep enhancing this, right? This is uh, just our initial release of it. Um, but we want to achieve the kind of formatting options that your users expect um, and that look great across any device. Andy mentioned that the canvas is in charge of uh, reflowing parts across the page. Our rich text editor is no different, right? We have a very specific type ramp in that rich text editor so that regardless of the device size that you're using, the font sizes will look great across any device. So you can have confidence that when you're making a page, it just will look great, All right? So I have our mission statement set up, uh, and then I want to add a document, uh, which is a template that my team uses um, as they track our progress. I went through that a little quickly, but as soon as I chose the document web part to embed on the page, I'm launched into experience to choose uh, a document. You can see the documents I've interacted with recently. I can browse uh, to any folder on the site. I can even upload something from my uh, local machine. But the document I'm choosing is something that I've used recently, so uh, I'll just add that here. Now, I'm still in edit mode, and Andy mentioned that our web parts uh, provide real-time interactivity. Uh, I didn't have to uh, save. I didn't have to publish. I didn't have to refresh the page to see that the document's actually rendered. Um, it happens in real time. I can page through it. So I have confidence that this is really the way I want things to look. Um, and I also add a caption. Uh, please. So now my, uh, my employees know what template they should use as they go out and make progress. Another thing that we do um, is when they're visiting these partners, it's useful for them to have an idea of what's going on in the, uh, in, you know, the partners' campaigns, if they're going through any organizational changes. Um, and so what I want to highlight here is the ability to embed content uh, from almost anywhere on the web. So I just chose the content embed web part. And all I need to do here is go somewhere, grab the embed code. You know, you all are probably very familiar with YouTube and you know, embedding YouTubes on pages. Um, what I'm actually going to do is uh, highlight something that we really like, uh, which is a sway. So you know, this is a sway that I found on the uh, public sway site. Uh, Smith Fashion, they're going through an expansion. Uh, if you haven't seen Sway, it's a great app for creating really polished, great looking content. And I just want to embed that on my page as uh, a resource for my team to see as they're going out in the field. Uh, let me go back. 
So I copied the embed code um, from this way. I will copy the embed code. And all I do is paste it in. So again, I didn't have to do anything. I can see how it looks. It's fast. It looks great. I can interact with it. Um, what's interesting with Sway, uh, I, can, uh, I have some display options, so I can change the layout. I can share it. So it brings in all the native controls uh, from that embedded content right into our page. Uh, and I was actually supposed to add some text up here. So uh, one thing I want to highlight, as you build your page, it's really easy to fit web parts uh, anywhere that you want them to go. Um, so you, know, you don't have to delete something that you added just to put something else above it. It's super simple to just add another web part in between two other web parts. Just copy text. All right, so uh, the next thing I want to do um, is have some reports. You know, uh, I'm sure you all have seen Power BI. Uh, here at uh, the Contoso clothing department, uh, progress reports and, and metrics are really important to us. And frankly, within Microsoft, you know, this is something that, that we watch like hawks. Uh, we watch usage dashboards all the time, um, uh, engagement metrics, reliability metrics. Uh, and Creating a page on my team site that brings in Power BI charts is just a super useful resource for my team. Uh, and I want to show you guys how easy it is to do that. So I'll go over to Power BI. Here we have a sample chart. Um, all I need to do is copy the URL, go back to my page, um, go down to the Power BI web part, insert, and all I have to do is paste in the link. Again, it renders the, the data in real time. I can see how it looks. I can interact with it while I'm still in edit mode. Um, I can expand uh, certain charts. Right? So if I wanted this chart um, to be on the main screen, I can do that. And so now my team has uh, you know, a way of keeping track on a day-to-day -day basis how we're doing it's embedded in the page, um, and they don't have to go hunting for the URL to the chart or anything like that. Finally, um, how many of you are familiar with the content by search web part that exists today? Yes. Excellent. Um, so one other thing that my team does, uh, or I like to do for my team, is, um, and here's. I like to keep uh, a section of the page reserved for when my team uh, has new reports from partners that they've been to. You know, they type up a report, yep, here's the program we're doing with this partner, here's how they're implementing our loyalty program in their stores. Uh, they write a report based on my template and they share it to. Uh, they put it in the document library, right? But I don't want them to have to go and hunting through all the document libraries to see all the work that everyone else has been doing, right? That's a lot of work for them. I want it to be part of this page. I want this page to really be a one-stop shop for them to get an idea of the work that everyone else on the team is doing. Um, and so that's where the highlighted content web part comes in. Just make that a heading. And insert. Highlighted content. And I'll be honest, this is my favorite web part. Um, and it's my favorite web part because it's so powerful. Um, right off the bat, it shows me uh, the most recent documents uh, in this site, which is a useful default. But I want to tailor a little bit to exactly what I need to use it for. So I just hit the, uh, the property pane button. Right? And you see a bunch of options on the right. First of all, I can change the source of the documents that it's looking for. So it defaults to this site, um, but I can choose this site collection, or I can have it choose all sites. Right? So it can look 
at this level, one scope up, and one scope above that. All right, I'm going to keep it to this, uh, to this site for now. And I have a bunch of choices for the kinds of content that it, uh, that it does show. Um, documents, pages, videos, images, events, um, you know, a number of different content types. You can extend that um, and add your own. Uh, I do want this to be about documents, but you could easily imagine using the highlighted contents web part to create a running feed of any specific kind of content that you choose. If you want to create a page that is hosting a bunch of training videos and your team publishes new videos all the time or shares new videos, it's very easy to do with the highlight contents web part. Um, now, my team produces a lot of work, but I only want them uh, to see the things for this quarter. And so it's super easy for me to just filter it down to any documents tagged for this quarter. And you see, I didn't have to save the page. I didn't have to republish the page. I didn't have to refresh the page. I'm seeing the results of what I'm doing instantly next to the property pane that I'm working in. And this is the value of the fabric that we have now, or the, the new SharePoint framework. So I could add other filters. Um, I can change the sort by most viewed, trending. Um, and if I really wanted more of a library-like experience, I could change the view to a list view. Right? But I really like the card view. I think it looks great. And lastly, I can, ch I can change how many items um, uh, this web part shows. Uh, I deleted the zero, and so it just filtered it down to one. So it's only showing the most recent. I actually want it to show 20, but I only think there are three. All right? And as everything we're doing, it's fast, it's fluid, and it's responsive. And so the page will just reflow if I, if I shrink it, but I'm actually going to show it to you on a phone. So I'll close this for now. Uh, did anyone notice me save the page? Right? I just spent a fair amount of time building a complex page, and I really don't want to lose my work. Right? But I didn't save it. Uh, but it does say my page has been saved. Uh, saved. We save this page every two seconds. Right? So uh, we want you to have confidence that you can build super complex pages with a ton of content and not worry about losing your data, All right? All right. And where was that for my jokes? <laughs> All right. So uh, I'm going to publish this page, All right? I have a nice little confirmation bar that says it's published. Um, and let's just go through this quickly, right? I made a great looking page with embedded documents, embedded external content from Sway, an interactive Power BI chart, right? And an always updating uh, highlighted contents web part that's showing the most recent documents from my site. And that took me, I don't know, what's the timer say? Five, 10 minutes, right? Super, super useful, incredibly easy, incredibly fast. Um, now, we talked about making pages um, more approachable for end users with the new button, adding a, a new page right from uh, the team site homepage. One other thing that we did was we added uh, uh, an, an item in the left-hand navigation of the team site for the pages library because we're allowing users to create so many more pages now. The, the, it's more discoverable. We also need to let them get to the library of pages where they're putting all these things. All right, so we want to make that easier to get to. So if I navigate in, immediately I'm taken to a modernized library. Uh, it's sorting by author. All right, but we've created a lot of pages uh, in this library. It's really hard to get back to the stuff that's just mine. Um, but we, we've fixed that too. So we, we've shipped this view with a bunch of built-in views. Right, And my favorite view. Uh, is the created by me view, right? So all I need to do is select created by me. It filters down immediately to the pages that I've made, so helping me get back to my work. That's a theme that uh, I'm sure you guys have heard us say. We want to help you get back to your work, um, get uh, things out of the way, and just get you more productive. Um, other things I can do, I can change uh, to the tile view. Uh, so all the all the greatness that came with our, our new modernized libraries uh, are here in the pages library as well. So now I want to jump over to the mobile app. Um, 
Can you switch it to three? Um, so I'm going to show you guys how that page looks, right? Fairly long, fairly complex page. I'm going to show how it looks in the SharePoint mobile app. Um, so I actually had made uh, a page just like that for the third quarter, right? That's, you know, a page that I make all the time. It has a similar structure. I'm sure you guys have a lot of the same scenarios. Uh, in the future, we will allow you to save a page as a template. Uh, and so if, you know, you have a set of web parts that you always use on pages, you'll be able to go and just create a new page like that. Um, and I added that page to the left-hand navigation of my site. Um, and so you can see right here in the mobile app, uh, underneath the Home tab, is the Q3 resources page. So I go in. You see how fast that loaded? Oh, Power BI. And this is why the Power BI part is still in preview. <laughs> Power BI, one more time. Demo Wi-Fi. All right, how many people have seen the, uh, the Power BI embedded on a page demo in a different session? Okay, so you know, most of you know that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, tr <laughs> yeah, that you trust that, him. Uh, uh, you can trust me that that part is fully interactive. You can zoom in, you can pinch. Um, I just made, in, on stage in about 10 minutes, a, a long, resource page for my, for my team. It extended the structure of my site. It had multiple interactive elements. And if my, site, my team's out in the field, all they need is a SharePoint mobile app, and now they have a great resource on the go uh, that, that works great wherever they are. So that was the longer, more full demo of our modern pages. Um, let me switch back to, That's... yes. Um, so that was one page, right? But with all the parts that we just talked about, you can make a ton of different kinds of pages, right? We only had time for one, but uh, just truthfully, within Microsoft, uh, we have people literally creating hundreds of these pages a day. Um, it's just, uh, it's, it's been tremendous. It's been uh, incredibly useful. Uh, and so now I want to talk about uh, Modern Pages Futures, right? The team site homepage. Uh, you've all seen the new modern team site homepage. That is a modern page. It'll be editable just like any other modern page. Uh, that's coming out very, very soon. Uh, I believe it's already uh, to some percentage of first release. Um, one thing that you may have noticed uh, is that all of the pages that we showed, the page that I built, it was a single column, right? Um, that's limiting, right? right? Now, it's a great start. But it's not going to allow you to create the full breadth of pages that you want to create, and we know that. So our next focus is allowing you to put parts next to each other on the page, right? You can clap more. Yes. Thank you. Not, not only that, allowing parts to span rows on the page so you can have parts next to each other that are not the same size. And so if you imagine this looks like a bit of a grid, and you can put parts wherever you want. Right? And because of the canvas, because of the modern SharePoint framework, however you shrink that page down, the parts will just reflow and it will be fully responsive. So you can create really complex pages really easily and not worry about how they're going to look on a mobile device because we take care of that for you. Uh, theming and branding enhancements. Uh, theming is supported today in modern pages. We want to make it better. Um, the, uh, we'll have more to say about that uh, over the next year. Uh, and then branding, uh, branding's going to be a big focus for us in the next year. We want to make it so that the pages that you create inherit the branding that you set up uh, elsewhere in your, uh, in your tenant. Um, we also want to give you the ability to control uh, where on the page does the branding go? Do all pages have to get that branding? Is it enforced? Um, so these are the things that we're thinking about as we work through theming and branding. Uh, content interaction capabilities. Um, you know, I'll be honest, uh, I, I thought about calling this one social interactions, but it's not quite social, right? 
If you go to any page on the web that is a news post or a news article, right, there are a couple uh, really common elements on all of those pages. At the bottom, there are probably comments, right? Comment section where you can have threaded conversations with other people who are reading this content, the author, right? And so we're going to build commenting into modern pages. Um, similarly, uh, a gesture called like, right? Or some other way of conveying that you, you like this content, you like that you've seen it, you want to communicate either to other people or the author that this content was good, right? Um, we're building that. Um, another key element and, and, and why we didn't call this social is because social is more nuanced uh, than just saying social interactions. Um, pages, uh, news posts on the, on the internet have uh, little icons, right? An F for Facebook or a little uh, bird for Twitter, right? We want you to be able to publish a page out to Yammer, right? And have conversations there. If Yammer is where you go and you converse within your, uh, with your employees, it's a different community, right? Um, and we need, to, we need to enable that. So, that's coming. Uh, and then finally, page analytics for authors, right? How are people reading your content? How many people have read it? How many people have shared it? Um, what is trending in views, right? You know, did you get a spike in views this week? Um, and what was the event that caused it? Did it get shared to one particular influencer in your company? Um, these are the analytics that we want to bring. We started down this journey with some of the, uh, the OneDrive work that we're doing, the Me tab. And the OneDrive mobile apps now shows you uh, um, some, uh, some core analytics about your files. And we're going to bring that, those same ideas uh, to modern pages. So that's a glimpse into what we're working on over the next year for pages. We know that this is a start. And uh, you know, as Andy alluded to, um, we've spent the last year building these key building blocks. Um, and now we're going to extend them. We're going to build really amazing out-of-the-box scenarios based on them. Um, so, uh, web part futures. So available now, you saw the image, document, Office 365 video, content embed, highlighted content, Yammer we didn't go into, news we're going to talk about, uh, quick links, it's a way of pinning uh, content to any page, site activity, you see that in the new modern uh, team site homepage, and Power BI, and then coming soon, uh, link preview. Uh, so, you, you want to embed a link, you get a rich preview. Um, you might be familiar with this in, in Facebook and Twitter and WhatsApp. You want to give people a preview of the content that they're seeing. Big maps, right? You need to tell people where something is. An interactive map is a great way to do it. Image gallery, wish I could have shown that one today. It's so close to being ready uh, and it looks great. Uh, so you have multiple images that you want to embed on a page. You want to have a carousel for them. You want to have a grid layout for them. Uh, we have that web part coming. Quick charts. Um, group calendar. So you have a group, an, of, uh, an Office 365 group, and you want to lay its calendar data onto a page, right? With multiple view choices a week, a day. Maybe you want to select multiple groups, right? And have all of them uh, overlaid onto one. We're working on that. So we're working on a lot of web parts, and we really hope that you guys are working on web parts too. Uh, if you do want to check, that should say check out, not heck out. Uh, if you do want uh, to learn more about the web parts we have coming, uh, session uh, 4015, I know it's uh, already happened, but the slides will be available uh, after the session, I think the audio recording. Um, so now that we've talked about modern pages, a key building block, and he's going to take us through SharePoint News, which is uh, a content distribution system that we built on top of it. Great. Thanks, Dave. A uh, couple more quick points on pages, too. In addition to that session that Dave mentioned, uh, you can go to our booth, and you'll see a number of these parts being demonstrated there as well. Uh, we've got other experts at the booth that you can talk to about more around the, how the web parts work, how the framework works, and, and futures. Um, a second point is, uh, how many of you all have first release tenants? OK, so some of you may have seen it. We're currently, for pages, uh, rolled out to 50% of first release. And we expect that 
uh, if everything is going in terms of the quality of service metrics that we measure, uh, that after Ignite will expand out to 100% of first release tenants. Um, from there, we'll deploy out to production in a staggered manner as we do with all of our uh, new features. Um, and we, as each stage, as we roll out, we evaluate the feedback we're getting, the quality, the metrics and data that we look at, and then we, we roll out to the next one. So we're about, uh, we're 50% deployed in first release, as some of you may have seen it. Uh, we'll be rolling out to 100% after this conference. And that brings up the third point, which is we're a very feedback-driven organization in our team. We have uh, a roadmap that we plan. We have innovation that we want to drive and deliver. We also want to actively get your feedback and incorporate that into our plans. Uh, so pretty much every application, every experience we deliver now has a mechanism for you to give feedback directly into the product. So I really, as you're using this, give us that feedback. As you use our mobile apps, give us that feedback. As you use SharePoint Home, give us that feedback. As you use TeamSide, everything has that mechanism. And we really do watch it, and then that influences our roadmap. An example um, of the future feature we'll be delivering in Pages also is, um, we, we didn't highlight this one, but it's feedback driven. If you saw the header uh, at the top of the page, um, we've gotten feedback from early preview users that they want to add their own custom image to that. Uh, so we understand that. that came, we thought that would come from our customers. It came from our customers. It's now on our backlog. It's a feature that we plan to deliver. We don't have precise dates for these things because we work through that process as more feedback comes in. But that's a clear example of a feature that we plan to deliver in the near term that's feedback driven. So please, as you use this, give us that feedback. OK, so let me shift to SharePoint News. Uh, again, I want to make the point that SharePoint News is built on top of all of the things you just saw in Pages and all of the things that we just talked about Pages. SharePoint News is addressing a problem that we looked at uh, that we refer to as the content distribution problem. So in, in a world, in a world, uh, in a world where um, you know, there's just so much information, so much content coming at us, I talked earlier about how we use the, the Microsoft Graph to deliver intelligence and relevant content. We also think there's a great opportunity to take that rich authoring and put it into a service and a system that will help get that content out. So we think teams need a durable way to showcase their key information and content and an easy way to find that content in the sites. So with TeamSite News, you'll see we put that in a, a very prominent part of the page, uh, of the home page for the team site. It's editable, so you can change that, you can remove it, but we want to make that a showcase feature of the team site. Um, we also think companies need a clear way to communicate news to their employees. That's already in, pro in, in, uh, in place in many companies today. Uh, I'm sure most of you or all of you have a company portal that delivers to your employees company news, organizational news, what's happening. Maybe it also has competitive news. Maybe it has industry news. Now, we think there's an opportunity uh, to deliver an out-of-box experience with SharePoint for our customers to uh, deliver that company news as well. We're starting with TeamSite News. Uh, we will also, uh, news is an enabler to all the publishing features we're going to talk about as we uh, get to the last section of this. And then, as I said, these, these content distribution problems, the third bullet we, we look at is really that they're typically solved by custom solutions. And there's nothing wrong with that, uh, but they typically require a little bit more complexity, uh, typically longer implementation, and uh, we think there's an opportunity for us to provide a system that's extensible. Certainly all of the content is yours and, and programmed, but it's also extensible that will help with time to market and cost for develop this. And then fourth is, it, it's just been hard to deliver that content to mobile devices. Uh, we think the SharePoint applications are that framework for delivery of this content. We're very focused, as I, I think we've talked about, on landing great experiences that work on web and that flow across mobile. And we want to make that proactive delivery to mobile devices to deliver that content wherever your employees go. So that's how we think about framing up uh, one of the core areas of the problem that we're trying to solve with news. Keep going back to my machine to advance slides. Uh, so with SharePoint News, we built a content distribution for SharePoint. It's built on modern pages. Our initial release is focused on news within a team and also personalized news that rolls up across sites. Uh, we'll demonstrate that. We've started with the personalized news on our iOS application. Our intention is to deliver that across all of our mobile applications and the web experience in SharePoint Home. And that, again, will be graph-powered so that it's intelligence to, intelligent to know the content that I'm interested in and what's going to be most relevant to me. But I can always go to the team site to see that news as well. 
And then it's built natively in the apps and the new team site homepage. It's got a prominent view on that page. Initially, uh, with Team News, uh, you can author from the web. Uh, very shortly, we will also add the ability to author from mobile. Uh, so we want to make it easy for you to uh, capture ideas on mobile, uh, grab pictures from a camera roll, put those into a post. Uh, we will start with uh, authoring on, on the web, and it's built on all of that uh, pages experience that Dave just showed, so it's got a very rich set of capabilities. Um, news posts are highlighted on the team site homepage and on SharePoint uh, on both the web and the mobile. Um, initial, additional news posts are found on a dedicated uh, uh, page in the team site. So a news archive basically is created where we showcase on the home page the top or most recent set, but you can always go back and see news that's been published into that team site on a dedicated page. And then we'll deliver an intelligent roll-up of the relevant news for you. Uh, and this will pull news from the places that you work the sites that you follow from where colleagues are working uh, and, and deliver that uh, in a feed into both the mobile applications and, and the web. So let me go ahead and switch over here to One my number. machine, which seven. is seven. And okay, I'm, instead of loyalty group, I'm gonna start in activewear. Uh, you guys maybe have not seen activewear as much this week, so we'll start there. And you see I'm on the team site homepage of the activewear, and I've got here a rich set of news items that are available to me on, on the homepage. Uh, I can interact with these and open up the content. You see the see all gives me the ability to go to that dedicated archive page that I talked about. Um, what I want to do is go ahead and compose a new news article. And this one's actually going to be inspired uh, by a real uh, news item that was just published uh, by our engineering manager counterpart on his Ignite, uh, Ignite uh, trip report. So I go in, you can see a familiar authoring canvas. I went into an entry point that's about creating news. I'm going to go ahead and just create my Ignite trip report. And I think I'm going to start with I'm going to start with uh, uh, Jeff's video, because I thought uh, that was a, a great way. We were really excited about the opening, and uh, so I'm going to use that content and web part, but this time I'm going to embed a video. So I'm going to go over here. I was capturing some notes for the trip report, and I'm going to grab that, paste that in. And you can see that comes in quickly. And let me just make sure that's the right video. It's got a picture of Najot, who's one of our GPMs on the team. You might not be able to hear the audio. But yep, that's the, that's the right one. You can see right there I have all the play controls. I can make it full screen if I want. Uh, and I can uh, go ahead and stop that because I know it's the, the right one. So I want to add up some text up here, actually. Uh, and now that I know that's the right one, I'll just say Jeff's keynote. If I can type. What's going on? Uh, okay. Uh, so I'll start with that. And uh, just add a caption. Just bring day talk. That's good. You can see that. And I'm going to go ahead and let's see. I think I uh, also have some more content, so I want to add some more text in here. Talk about some notes. We spent yeah, we spent most of the first day in the in the uh, opening session and keynotes and meeting with customers. Uh, Scott Guthrie gave the opening keynote. Talk. That's good. Go ahead and save that. And then uh, later that night, we uh, 
we went to the SharePipe uh, event, and so we have a couple of pictures of that, and I want to uh, add those in. Let's see, grab that one. Actually, I want to preview those first before I do. Just take a quick look here. Yep, those both look good. Put both of that, that one in there. Uh, at the SharePoint, at the SharePoint, and we got SharePoint hats. And let me just see if I got any other notes. Yeah, we uh, add a little bit more text in there. Copy that in. I can go ahead and just copy that right in there. And that looks good. I think I'll, uh, you know, add some more details to this uh, news item later when I get back to the get back to the office. But for now, I got a uh, embedded uh, embedded content. I've got a photo. I've got the video. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, publish that. I uh, don't know what that's maybe one of the reasons we're still in 50% of first, or with news is not deployed, excuse me, uh, the pages. But you can see it shows up immediately on the team site homepage. Uh, it pulled that image uh, right from uh, the post. I didn't have to do anything to make that uh, showcase image. And if I go over and launch into the SharePoint app, you want me to switch? and I'm going to go back into the, we're in the activeware group. What number are you? Uh, it is three. So there you see uh, that trip report shows up. I can go ahead and open it. Video could play. The TV. How do we switch? Oh, uh, but you see there's the photo I put in, the content I put in. Let's try that video one more time. Yeah, it's playing. Oh, there. Is it playing? Yeah. They can't see it. Everybody's well fed. Yeah. It's after lunch. Oh. We're ready to go. It's playing well, on my phone. I don't know why it's not uh, projecting there. It is? Yeah, it's, it's Jeff's session. Okay, great. So yeah, so I, that was not a full demo, but you got the idea from Dave's Pages demo that any of those parts that were available to me in Pages, uh, I can bring into that news system. And basically, with one click, it shows up on the team site homepage in a beautiful manner. It pulled images directly from the post. I didn't have to think about what that hero image is going to be. Uh, and then it showed up in pretty much instant delivery into the mobile application. Uh, I mentioned that that was inspired by uh, a trip report that our engineering manager created. Um, he actually posted that into his team's uh, uh, team site. Uh, I happen to work with quite a number of people on the team, of course. Um, but for in this particular case, it's a public group. I wasn't a member of it. And it actually showed up in my personalized news feed on the iOS app with, again, without me having to do anything. And it's because of those graph signals that I work closely with that, uh, that with, with John and with his organization. It determined that that was relevant for me and, and showed me that content. So I was able uh, to read that content. It's a public group, so that's, that's the way it was available to me. But it gives you an example of um, delivering the right content that will be relevant to me uh, and, and delivering that in a personalized manner uh, using signals from the graph. So let's uh, switch back over. Um, to this one? Uh, yep. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, things that are ahead of us. I think we've covered some of this um, in terms of we're going to create uh, these news experiences, both uh, the team site news that, that you've seen on both uh, web and iOS, and the personalized news that we've demonstrated uh, on iOS. Uh, we're going to create that across all of our uh, SharePoint applications experiences. Um, we will uh, put that onto the Android and Windows apps, and we'll bring it to the SharePoint Home experience. 
Uh, there are additional capabilities for mobile. Uh, in addition, we will be uh, creating a rich authoring environment. Uh, Nate and I at a session yesterday gave you an early glimpse of some of the user experience for that. Uh, that will be integrated with the phone camera roll. That will be integrated with different applications on the phone. So you can pull data directly from the phone into the authoring experience and post that from, uh, from your phone into uh, all of the endpoints for news distribution. Um, we also uh, plan to support what we call draft mode. So if I'm on the go, I'm at Ignite. Imagine that scenario I just did. I just have a few minutes. I don't want to necessarily create the finished good. I want to capture some ideas. I want to take some pictures and start to compose that new, uh, start to create that news uh, post. Uh, we'll also offer that draft mode support in our roadmap so that I can capture those ideas. I might finish them later on the phone because the phone will be a rich uh, authoring device, but I might also uh, come later and, and finish that on the web. And then uh, Dave talked about uh, the content and social interaction features, author analytics. Uh, those will be capabilities we'll deliver to both pages and also into the news experience. And then uh, we want to enable the ability to post to news from any content source. So imagine you're in a document library, imagine you've created a page, uh, you want to now put it into that news uh, uh, content distribution system, uh, we'll enable that feature in our roadmap in the future as well. So I can create news right from the news entry point, I can also go to the content that uh, is the content I want to put into the distribution system and have that gesture to uh, add to news. And then uh, we're also uh, in our roadmap planning on delivering company and organizational news. So the team site news we think is the kind of news around you, the news uh, that's in the places you work with the groups and teams that you work with. Uh, in addition, there's news from your organization and uh, we plan to uh, deliver that. We'll have more to share on that. We've got uh, some interesting ways that we think we can bring content in that with some uh, ideas that we have about integrating with the existing systems. Uh, but we want to make that a really easy out-of-box experience uh, for you to deliver company and organizational news to your employees. Um, one of the things I talked about in the session yesterday is the SharePoint Home experience um, really is, is getting a fair amount of usage overall in the SharePoint Online uh, experience. Right now we have the ability to program company links into that. We want to extend that as an endpoint for you to reach your, your employees as well. So uh, we want to provide a system for company organizational news that could be put into a company portal offering if you chose to. We also want to have that ability to deliver that content into the SharePoint home uh, because we're finding uh, quite a number of users are going there to find the sites and information that are relevant to them. We think that's a great way for you to reach your audience of employees where they're already working. So with that, uh, we're going to spend the next section uh, uh, covering modern publishing sites, some of the things that are ahead for us in modern publishing sites. And then, time allowing, uh, we'll uh, wrap up and open up for Q&A. Thanks. Uh, before I do that, why was the calendar afraid? Someone told him his days were numbered. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I want to talk about a shift in how we think about publishing sites. Um, today, uh, self-service site creation is team sites, right? It's for team collaboration. Uh, publishing sites has a completely different flow to go and create a site that is not uh, a team site. Um, what companies need today is an easy, out-of-the-box way to present polished information to their teams, kind of like I did for the resource page that I created, but as an entire site. Um, and it needs to be uh, intuitive. It needs to be uh, IW-led. So if you have employees, they shouldn't have to go and ask someone, how, did I, how do I create a site that does X, right? Where X is not a team site, right? Um, so they need an easy way to create these things. The content within it should be easy, and we just talked about the building blocks for how we achieve that, right? It's based on modern pages, right? You can craft the page that you need to create easily, quickly, uh, and work with it as you're creating it. Uh, and it should be flexible, right? You know, how many people create the site today that they know there's going to be the site they need in two years, right? Your needs change, right? The needs of the site change. You have content in that site, and you want to easily extend it or change its purpose. Right? And it has to be fantastic on a mobile device. That's just a table stake now. Um, 
And so this has kind of brought about a shift in how we think uh, publishing sites should be going forward. Uh, and so we'd like to introduce to you um, how we're thinking about beautiful, out-of-the-box publishing sites. Um, now, we did spend the, the first bit of this talk talking about the work that we did over the last year uh, in building those key building blocks. And this is a forward-looking section, right? So this is what we're focusing on in the next year. So our new publishing sites will be open to end users, right? IWs will be able to go to a gallery of sites and see uh, a list of site intents, as we're calling them, right? You'll see a site for reports, right? You'll see a site that's maybe a brochure site. You'll see a site that's maybe a magazine uh, or a marketing content repository. We will build tailor-made uh, design templates for sites for your end users to choose from, right? And we'll have a large gallery of them. The community will provide even more. Um, and uh, you'll be able to highlight the sites that you think work for your company, right? And put them at the top of the gallery or trim the gallery down to only those sites because you know that those sites uh, work well for your company. Um, so what comes with a site? Uh, we, you saw the default team site homepage layout. Well, um, a publishing site will come with uh, a tailor-made uh, homepage layout, layouts for article pages or, or other pages that you create, content types, so you might have report as a content type, you might have an article as a content type, uh, and each of those will have separate layouts. Um, Navigation structure, so do you have top nav on the site? Do you have left nav? Do you want it to uh, inherit this from you know, a base template somewhere else? You'll be able to do that. Uh, default web part configuration, so you know that the home page should have these web parts, right? Site pages uh, should have these other web parts, right? Uh, and that kind of goes to, you'll be able to design your own uh, site packages, right, and put them in the gallery. So we'll have some that will include all this. You can take them, you can extend them, and you can save them back as templates for your organization. Uh, and easy and powerful authoring. We talked about um, uh, modern pages and how easy they are to work with. That is how we achieve uh, authoring in modern publishing sites, right? That will be the, the authoring canvas that we have going forward. You see in the design that we have here, this is just an example, but this gets to that uh, multi-column layout that we said was coming in the future. We need that to achieve true out-of-the-box beautiful publishing sites. Um, mobile ready. So like we said, we're leveraging the canvas that we talked about to make it so that every single page within these sites just works on your mobile device. There's nothing that you'll need to do uh, to make it so that it, it looks okay. It will be fast, it will look great. Um, I talked about you'll be able to extend these things so you can start with one design package, you can remove web parts from pages, um, you can add a different kind of page, and you can save it back and say, you know, this is what my company needs, this is what my employees need to be successful. The, uh, the out of the box uh, template uh, is close, right? And it probably will be because we'll have a lot of them to choose from, right? But you know how to make it just right for you. Uh, and so we'll allow you to save that back as a template that you can then put in the gallery. Um, and like I said, uh, they will just reflow and look great on mobile. Um, so uh, this is our roadmap. Uh, we, we mentioned that modern pages uh, are coming uh, very soon, uh, Andy mentioned that they're at 50% of first release. Uh, next week, uh, we intend to uh, try to roll them out to 100% of first release, you know, uh, if everything looks all right. Team news is rolling out soon. So content distribution, coming to team sites first, right? Democratized uh, content publishing. Uh, personalized news on iOS is coming along with that. So we all know that everyone works across a lot of sites. Uh, we need to enable you to have a way of getting to the published news from those sites uh, and brought together in one stream of news. Uh, so that's coming to iOS um, initially. Um, 
modern web parts on classic pages. So we talked a lot about our new client-side web parts. Those will be backwards compatible on classic site pages in SharePoint. Um, and then uh, in the first half of calendar 17, um, we're coming out with modern publishing sites. So the, um, the principles that I laid out right before this slide um, will have our initial set of design packages um, and we'll create more over time. So that gallery will grow and grow and grow and then we'll add capabilities to it like the ability to search, the ability to filter, uh, the ability to see recommendations based on what's being used within your organization. So build the building blocks, extend it with the power of the Microsoft graph. Uh, and so over the next year, you'll see us deliver some of that. Uh, personalized news on other platforms. Andy mentioned that uh, personalized news is coming to uh, Android, Windows, uh, and eventually the web. Uh, site and page perf improvements, we are always, always, always focused on making these things fast, right? So over time, these experiences will just get faster. Um, company and organizational news, uh, this is a big one that we're excited about. We've gotten a lot of feedback that, you know, the first thing that we say when we have a new system is, well, I already have a new system, right? And we know. Uh, and ours needs to plug into that. And so over the next year, we're going to um, lay down our map for how you can plug your existing uh, corporate news system into our content publishing system so you can leverage the endpoints that we're delivering to you, right? You no longer have to solve the mobile problem. We'll solve it for you. Uh, and finally, notifications, right? And that's, uh, that completes that content distribution problem. When there's a new relevant news post, there's a memo from your CEO, right? There is, um, you know, an important uh, all hands happening uh, because of, of uh, some changing events, right? That could go out as an email, and it will, right? But it's li likely published content within SharePoint uh, that leverages all of, of SharePoint's permissioning um, and content management capabilities. And it should come in through the SharePoint mobile app, and it should notify you that, hey, there's something important here. Um, and so that's coming in the first half of uh, 2017 as well. So uh, we have about 12 minutes for questions. We're happy to take them at the microphones. Happy to have you guys come on up. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, you've been pretty great, and you've tolerated me and uh, my jokes. Thank you so, very much, everybody. Have a great rest of your show. Thank you.